Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today it's uh, Friday the 28th of April. We finally repaired the gator. Today I've been cutting out some more cattle. I've been putting on some grass seed on the land we cultivated yesterday. I've run out of grass seed. The next delivery is uh, next week, next Wednesday. So I'll get the rest of the seed to finish that job. And we've rebuilt the gator, put all the new parts on. Uh, it's had a new battery, it's had some new bearings and bits and bobs. Just washed it off this afternoon and it's almost ready to be sold. And it has a few more bits on it, ready to go. Also put a new bearing on it, just down there. So it's, it's gonna have all the bits put on it so that it's ready to be sold because we were supposed to sell it last year. And then unfortunately, we'd ordered the, the new Kawasaki Pro, Kawasaki Pro Mule DX, which is a diesel Kawasaki, which goes at 30 miles an hour on the road. It's got like, uh, we ordered it with oversized tires and a front winch from Ernest Doe's. Uh, just after we bought the Manitou, we bought that from Doe's as well. Um, we spoke to Henry and we ordered a new Kawasaki, um, but it hasn't arrived yet because it's taken a long time to turn up. I think it's been on, on order for coming up for a year. We ordered it last July, so um, a couple of months and it'll be a year, but it will turn up at some point. So we're, that's why we haven't sold this yet, but we have got it into uh, reasonable order again so that all the parts are right on it for the next owner. You know, we wouldn't want to sell something from the farm, which is going to go wrong. You know, we're trying to do our best to get every little piece right on this gator before it's sold. Um, so yeah, it will go soon. We've got another buggy coming on a short-term loan um, next Tuesday, which is going to replace this one until we hopefully get the Kawasaki. And yeah, you know, John Deere, we've had this for quite a while now. I've tried the Honda Pioneer. I've tried the Can-Am, had that for a year. We've had the Gator now for, a, I believe we've had this for a couple of years, actually, the Gator. So we've had three or four different buggies. Uh, next one, of course, will be the Kawasaki Pro Mule DX. We've also got a short-term loan of the Polaris Ranger Diesel Deluxe with the new insulated cab. Um, so we'd have always, almost tried all of the farm buggies. I believe there's another European one a lot of you guys keep telling me about. Um, but, you know, I've been thinking, should we you know should we sell the buggies and just buy a farm pickup truck like a toyota hilux or a, an isuzu or a suzuki jimny a lot of people talk about for checking livestock on the broads i see a lot of the suzuki jimnies around these days they're light you know their fuel economy is pretty good you know they run on petrol um, but one thing we like about the farm buggies is that they run on red diesel if they're doing farm work. Um, they are quite easy to work on generally, um, although this has been, of all the farm buggies we've had, the John Deere Gator has unfortunately been uh, the most complicated, the most difficult to work on, and I know I'm gonna, we're going to sell it, but it has been the most unreliable, which uh, is, is normally something I wouldn't say about John Deere because we do like the brand and what they're about. I mean, we've got John Deere tractors. Although having said that, we've got still got some cows in here which are due to calf, just keeping an, keeping an eye on them at the moment. I think if we ever bought another tractor, it would be a older model of tractor, something like a John Deere 6920 or a 7810. I was looking at a 7810 the other day and it had done like 14,000 hours and the, the dealership wanted 45,000 pounds for a John Deere 7810. So uh, we'll be keeping the 6R for a while, but it would be nice, as I said last year, to get a 7530 or I've been thinking more recently about an old 6920, something a bit cheaper because the prices of used equipment, especially tractors, um, it's just going through the roof for some reason because I, I think a lot of farmers are catching on to the fact that new tractors are um, too expensive, they're too complicated, they've got AdBlue, they've got electrics which go wrong as we found out yesterday when the GPS wasn't working. We did finally get it to work but you know, as this tractor gets older it will probably become more unreliable because they've got so many electronics on them nowadays but this was the one which we wanted, that's why we sold the John Deere 6930, which I, I wish we hadn't sold now, but Dad wanted to sell the 6930, unfortunately, and uh, I do miss that tractor because it was a lot less complicated than this one. Obviously, this one's got the urea, it's got AdBlue, it's quite expensive to fill up, but it is what it is. Um, I don't mind the AdBlue, to be fair, on the telehandler when it's in the shed. It's not too bad. You don't get fumes in your in your face when you're feeding the cattle all day, which is quite nice. But on the tractor, I'm not really that bothered. I just, I'm not bothered if it's got AdBlue or not. Yeah, we have got another brand of tractor, which we're going to try out this year, which is the new Massey Ferguson 7S. And I think if we went for the 7S.180, we'd probably sell the 6R and trade it in because it's, it's got a lot of electronics on it. And I'm, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it'll age that well. We'll see. Time will tell. It has been, to be fair, it has been, with, it, with the exception of the GPS, it has been quite reliable. I think this bit's the DPF. And then, or you've got a DPF in there, and you've got a DPF there, and you've got the AdBlue system. I know some people turn the AdBlue off on John Deere's, but I don't know. You can get in trouble for that these days. For the uh, like, um, I, I don't know if John Deere's taken anyone to court on that, but you can you can bet at some point someone will get in trouble for deleting the AdBlue on these tractors. 
I know quite a few people who have done it now and they seem to get away with it, but I don't know. I, I think you're better off, if you're gonna buy something and you don't want AdBlue, just buy it without AdBlue. Just buy something really old. And that's like I say, that's why the old tractors are going for a fortune. Um, we have got one of these on the farm, which is absolutely brilliant. This is a, they don't make them anymore, I don't think, but this is the John Deere X750, which is the mini lawn mowers. And there, it was quite a good model. Kind of like the 20 series of John Deere lawn mowers. I mean, to be fair with John Deere, they make good lawn mowers and they make good tractors, but the buggies aren't the best. The gators are not great. Um, the 65, that's currently still being rebuilt. We've got oxygen settling, and there's another part I need in the middle. There's like a small bushing in there, which I've got to replace as well before I can repair the brakes. Um, I have been thinking about swapping this, about swapping it for a Massey Ferguson 165 with a roll bar, but uh, we'll get this up and running first, and then we'll take it out and um, use it again. But it would be nice to look at a 165. That was originally what I'd always wanted um, to, to match with the 135, so I'd have a nice pair. But we'll see. It's been a good tractor. It's almost fixed. Just a few little bits left on it and it'll be done. And for now, we are getting ready to get this sold. Get it going. And then I've also been repairing the chipper. That's got a, a new bearing on yeah, it. We just finished installing this new bearing and a, and a new sensor. That small wire there is a sensor which we installed because the old one had gone wrong. And then in the middle, that's a, a main bearing which we just put in. And then there's also a new PTO shaft because the old one was bent. So that's been replaced and almost everything now on it put new hydraulic hoses on got new blades for the flywheel or everything on it is almost repaired and almost ready to go to its new owner so that's another bit of a job which has been taking up some time but it's almost finished and it'll be sad to see it go but on the other hand Collins Farming and Forestry does do a great job with his massive Jens chipper so hoping to sell this and then this will pay for the mower and baler and uh, so maybe some other things which you want to buy for the farm but mainly making silage to be honest because what we do you know we're farmers at the end of the day and i'd rather have silage equipment than a wood chipper at the end of the day i mean with the farm with the biomass boiler it's all propped up with government subsidies so it's like on a contract for so many years you get paid with the rhi whereas with silage you know you get paid with the cattle so we've been the cattle have been successful for years and years whereas the boiler, you know, these renewable energy schemes, you don't know how long they're going to last. So I'd, we'd rather make our own silage than try and produce our own chip. That's what we're doing. So just a little update, really, trying to get these two sold, the gator and the chipper, and then we'll hopefully invest in some silage equipment later on in the year. So uh, with that, I think it's going to rain for the rest of the afternoon. Weather hasn't been great this week. It's been quite cold and it's been wet. It's proven to be a bit of a, a late spring, but all the cattle are almost out now. And uh, I washed off the stock box this morning as well. So I'll be getting the calves out before long. And uh, then we'll be looking to making, cutting some silage. Yeah, with that, thanks for watching. Keep liking and subscribing, and I'll catch you on the next one. Click here to subscribe to the channel, and click here to watch another Ollie's Farm video. Mm.